Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to an interview here. I like to interview online teachers and coaches. And today we get to hear from BJ, who is both of those. He's a teacher and a coach. So BJ, let us know a little bit about you. Sure. It's great to be here, Nancy. So I'm a husband and a father with a whole bunch of kids here at the home. And uh, my wife and I, Rachel, have been married for 20 years. Uh, I've done just about every job there is in an elementary school all the way from custodial work to the principal and everything in between. But the best place there is, is in the classroom. So that's where I am now. And in the meantime, I also teach online. Uh, I've taught kids overseas and kids in America as well online. And I'm also a biblical parenting coach uh, at Jesus Help Me Parent and uh, work with lots of families one-on-one -on -one and in group coaching sessions and in live presentations and webinars and all kinds of things like that. Uh, I also manage social media for my church lately. So we uh, we keep life busy around here and uh, it's great. Yeah, so wild. When I, when I hear all the things that BJ is doing and how you're learning and growing and helping in your community, helping in the school, helping in your home, I'm just, I know that you have a lot of wisdom. So I'm excited to tap into that today to share it with those listening. Um, BJ was actually one of my coaches, he was my parenting coach and I helped him with YouTube. So we kind of have been, <laughs> been able to mentor and help each other, which is pretty wild. I love that. That's how the online world, if someone has a skill and is an expert in something, that's who you want to go to and learn from. So with your experience in teaching, with coaching, with all the things you have your hands in, how do you how do you balance it all? How do you make sure that well, you're not dropping the ball? Or maybe we are dropping the ball. Who knows? Yeah, I'm going to say, who says I am balancing it all? <laughs> <laughs> I check in with my wife a lot. That helps me know how much I'm balancing, really. Uh, but when I really think about it, and you know, right now we're in a busy season, especially with school just starting and and summer ending and things like that, uh, it, it comes down to understanding what my top priorities are, and then what are secondary. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also understanding that uh, we're called to balance life differently at different seasons. And so, I mean. Any anyone in your audience who is a teacher or who's married to a teacher knows like September is like a month long Monday morning. <laughs> and so so spouses of teachers get it like I'll see you like October 15th ish and it'll be great uh, because at that season, we're called a little bit more to our profession at that point. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't do the mom things and the dad things during that season. But our family sort of understands that piece and they can support us. So having that supportive family structure really does help in a lot of ways. Uh, and then just sitting down every week and just looking at what's happening and what's going to be happening in the coming week or two weeks, and then understanding, okay, what do I need to make priorities right now if I'm going to keep things balanced in the right way? Uh, and, and what really does help at the end of the day, though, is staying in tune with the people. So, you know, I kind of laugh and say, oh, I check in with my wife. That tells me if I'm balanced or not. But yeah, checking in with my wife and noticing her and noticing just where she's at emotionally and relationally. And that tells me, oh, gosh, I've been, you know, yes, this is a busy season, but I'm, I'm, I'm first. I'm her husband. I need to, to, to spend a little more time there. I need to put something on hold over here. Or looking at my children and noticing, oh, gosh, this one's acting up a little bit more than normal. Well, that, that behavior is trying to communicate something to me. And a lot of times it's trying to communicate, I need you a little bit more. So, all right, even though it, I, you know, it, I got 20 other things to do right now, we're reading that book on the couch together. And so a lot of it is staying in tune with the people around you that matter the most to you. I love that. It's, it's almost, that's exactly what I teach in my, um, I forgot the name of it, power hour. I was just thinking mindset hour, but yeah. for the power hour was make sure you have your priorities listed first when you're scheduling mm -hmm. your time, because a lot of times I think we get burnout or we get overwhelmed or we feel like we're dropping the ball on things because we're not making priorities a priority. So the fact that it is, I'm a husband and a dad, and that's my number one there at the top. And then the rest, and then you get to fill your cup there. And then that pours into teaching and coaching and all the other things you do. Yeah. So and, and we're not going to always get it right. And, nope. and we shouldn't think we are, and we shouldn't beat ourselves up when we don't, 
but we're going to keep working at it and that's okay. Yeah. So good. I heard one, um, I was listening to a podcast and they talked about how a lot of times if we don't put first the commandment of love yourself and and love your neighbor, if that's not first that love and that relationship, then we can feel out of alignment. And so coming back to that and how you said, just being there, if I see a child's acting out, that's communication. They're communicating that maybe they need some more attention. So good. So when you are, you're teaching second grade and also running the social media for your church and then also growing your coaching business and currently coach for a Christian community, correct? Yes. So how do you find the time? Because you also create content on YouTube and how do you find the time to create the content and to build the coaching brand and business when your dad, your husband, your, you have a full-time job. Like, how do you find that time? How do you carve it out and make it happen? Because I know for me personally, it's easy to say, I just didn't have time. I didn't get to it. And it's easy to go seasons without consistently posting. Yeah. But I feel like that's something you've cracked the code on because you're <laughs> you're very consistent in it. It looks like that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. How do you do it? So, well, there's a, there's a couple of things. So I feel like in the content creation world, especially YouTube, the, when we ask that question, how do you get consistent? The, the 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 rote answer that we're always given is batch, batch, you know, and and that's the answer we're all given. And I I like that answer. I want to do that answer, but I feel like anyone who's really given that answer doesn't have a bunch of kiddos running around their house <laughs> doing all the things that the kiddos do. Because like a, a Saturday where I record four videos, uh, yes, please, that'd be nice, but. <laughs> Not happening. That's not just happening. And so as much as I want to say, oh, go, you should batch. That can work for some people. And I love that strategy. But there's a lot of us where we're not at that season and that doesn't work. And so for me, a couple of things. Being a teacher, I look like a great YouTuber in summer because <laughs> I have the time there, right? And so I try to get a little bit of extra stuff done, a little bit of extra planning done in seasons where I have that time. I try to think in themes for my content so and part of this is just being a good content creator you want your content to relate to one another so instead of thinking of six episodes of of youtube videos or blogs or whatever they are that you're creating think of six youtube videos that are all independent topics trying to come up with a theme for those six videos so okay i'm going to talk about big emotions i'm going to talk about getting your kids to do what they're told instantly, completely, and cheerfully. And well, how can I take that one idea, that topic, what are five or six different episodes? And I, and I don't have a magic number. I just allow that number to happen naturally. But how do I take that piece of content and, and multiply it? Then I have content that relates so it builds each other because I can easily say, and if you like this video, you want to check out at the end of the video and things start relating and helping each other, but I'm now thinking thematically. And so instead of trying to come up with, okay, hacks for good car rides with your kids and six tips for getting dinner on the table and all those different things, I'm just thinking about big emotions, let's say. And uh, so when I'm thinking about video one, I'm also thinking about video two and three. And then when I have a thing that I'm thinking about for video three, it's influencing what I'm doing in video one as well. So I'm really planning all of it together. So that that idea of planning multiple things at once and sitting down on a long car ride and when you're not driving and writing it down and coming up with that, that helps a lot. Getting it done then comes down to figuring out what works for you. So I fa- and, and understanding your audience's needs as well. So I went through a season where I tried all the video editing stuff to keep the visual engaging because I had the same analytics everybody else has like that, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it was, I mean, it started out really good, but y'all ain't hanging in there at the end. So how do I raise that up? And so a lot of people say, you got to have a lot of be real and a lot of these other pieces. And so I, I did all that and the videos look great and the analytics didn't change a lick. Wow. So I'm like, okay, so it's it's not me. That's good. It's not me. It's not the be real. What is it? And as I tuned into more of what people who were watching me needed, 
they stayed longer. I still have videos that slide, but I now have some videos that coast across, which is great. And the, and the length hasn't affected it that much and the visuals haven't. So for me, I said to myself, okay, my audience does not uh, value lots of visual. They value the content and the style at which it's delivered in. And the more conversational I've become, the more comfortable I've become on the camera, uh, the better the analytics have been and, and the better my audience has been too. So that's helped a lot. So I found, okay, I don't need to spend so much time editing because it hasn't changed anything. So I'm going to stop doing things that aren't changing things. I found other things like, hey, when I do an interview, that's uh, that can be a little bit of an easier editing process as well. So I'm just starting to get into that mode. I still do just solos, but I'm also starting to add that edit, uh, excuse me, interviewing piece as well because that can increase the number of videos I can have out there. So figuring out how to reduce how much time specific things take, and you know what's taking you the longest. For some people, it's thumbnails. For some people, it's the editing process. For other people, it's the recording process. Um, I just came through a season, or I'm still finishing it up, where I decided I can't, I can't even spend that much time editing. So I'm going to go live on Facebook <laughs> for my YouTube video. And I tell my Facebook audience, you're watching a YouTube video in the making, behind the scenes. <laughs> and, and, and I just shoot it there. And I try as much as possible to get it just perfect. And, and just what it is is what it is. And so if I clear my throat or sneeze, I edit it. But like outside of that, it is what it is. And that then allowed me, okay, I'm live on Thursday with on Facebook. And by Monday, that video is live on YouTube. And that accountability with my audience has forced me to show up. And the system I built reduced my editing significantly. So it allowed me to get the video out faster. And that creating multiple pieces of content around one topic allowed me to make six thumbnails at one time. So I wasn't sitting there after I edited to go, what's the thumbnail supposed to look like? So that's just some ways I've done it, but that's taken time. <laughs> it's taken um, it's taken a lot of mistakes. It's taken a lot of late Saturday nights, you know, and, and all the things we do where we're up at one o'clock because we need the bit.ly link to finally fit in the description or whatever. Like it, it takes a lot of messing it up to figure out what's not working and what is working. Yeah. I'm so glad you shared that <laughs> like all the mentors are going to be saying batch, 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 but that's not how you do it. And I think looking back the time that I have been the most consistent, I wasn't batching content yeah. and you'll hear mentors tell you do this strategy. And sometimes it doesn't work. And yeah. because you're a different person, you think differently, you have a different process. So I love that you mentioned creating, like, it's almost like you've created your own process and the way to get there is just keep showing up. I think about it like um, teaching a fitness class. When I teach a fitness class, I'll have people give me feedback. I really like how you did this, or I didn't really like how you did that. And so I'm able to tweak the class to where yeah. it grows. More people are showing up because I'm listening to the feedback. And so with the videos, if all the editing and extra time is not as important as the quality content, like what's the topic? Right. What do my, what does my audience really need from me? That's what's so important. I've kind of had a mindset shift on YouTube too, similar to before I thought it was get more subscribers, get more views. And now my mindset is I care about the quality of audience. Like, are they the people that I can truly help? Is that who's in my audience? And the way I know that is I'm listening to them. They're in the comments, they're sharing in coaching calls, they're telling me what they're struggling with. And so I'm able to create the videos with confidence knowing this is something that they really need. Yeah. So, so good. Uh, I was writing, so I was writing my weekly email that had my weekly video in it this past week. And something about this conversation was triggered in my mind in the sense that uh, I finished the email, I, re I read what I wrote, and, and I do a lot of like, I'm writing, I'm writing, and you do this at times too, where you put something in parentheses that you're really thinking, and, and you, know, you know they're thinking that too. And because uh, we just, we got to be honest about parenting. It's, it's tough, right? And so let's just call it what it is. And uh, as I wrote that, 
I thought to myself, wow, that that's pretty honest, what I just put here. And I thought, I, I realized we spend so much time in this in this world of content creation of saying, understand who you're talking to, try to figure out who your, your avatar is, your ICA is, whatever language you use there. And what I realized is, yes, I've spent a lot of time figuring that out. And it shifts and changes uh, at different points in your, in your journey. But I also realized as much as I'm trying to find those people that fit that, um, they're trying to find me. And I realized in that email, I was pretty authentic and pretty just being me in that email. And I realized I'm more myself on camera now than I was six months ago, a year ago, five years ago. And so as much as we try to figure out the audience, part of figuring out the audience is allowing the audience to figure out you. And you being you on camera, you and your blog, you and your podcast, whatever the thing is you do, because you're going to attract the audience that's for you. Oh, good. Wisdom. I told everyone, <laughs> you just going to bring wisdom. I love that you mentioned that because I've gone through that same where I, I say, this person's really successful. I need to have a lot of energy and be in their face. Yeah. And then I've watched others and I'm like, oh, they're calm. Like, and so I've mimicked <laughs> different personalities and I'm yeah. like, well, what am I? Like, how, how do yeah. I want to show up? Because yeah. you can most definitely copy or do what the successful brands are doing, but then you'll get burnt out and you'll just, and you yeah. won't be attracting the people that you want to connect with. So being really true to yourself, your values and how you want to show up. I think that's so important. And no matter what you're teaching, you teach parenting. I teach build a brand online yep. and, and what, no matter what your values shine through and people are attracted to that, how you go about teaching it. Absolutely. Let's jump into what you teach with, with your coaching, you <laughs> coach parents and on parenting helped me a ton <laughs> <laughs> with me. I still remember on my poster, I had like the different, different strategies that you taught. I would put them on my fridge. Cause I really wanted, like, I, I wanted them to be in my soul. I wanted to know them, yeah. but you, you currently are teaching emotions and how to help kids with their big emotions. Um, do you want to kind of speak a little bit about that? What if, sure. What so the for, coaching, a lot of moms listening. yeah. So the coaching program that I use is really using a heart-based approach to parenting. A lot of parenting approaches are looking to help children with their behavior, but behavior is just communication the real problem lies down in the heart because your child has certain beliefs and assumptions about the world and some of them are right and some of them are not right. And so I don't worry so much about the behavior of a child as much as I focus on the heart of a child because we can look at how what God does. God, God is not interested in our behavior. He's, he doesn't have a bunch of rules saying you got to do these things. He says, I, I want to know you personally and I want to capture your heart you'll start doing the stuff that makes me smile once I have your heart. And so we take that same concept and we look at how does God transform hearts? And we find throughout scripture, he uses seven different heart tools. And so we can use those tools and adapt them to our parenting as we work with our children through the context of our relationship with them to help them with whatever they need help with as they grow. A big thing that a lot of children and some adults need help with are emotions. And so I spend a lot of time, whether it's one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching, whatever it is, talking about emotions and helping families realize one of the big misunderstandings a lot of people have, have is that we're trying to stop emotions. There's, there's a group that's trying to stop emotions. They just quiet down, sit down, don't cry, you know, get over it. You got the other group reacting like, no, just totally embrace it. Free to be me. Just go for it. And, and they eventually get tired of the kids screaming. You know, But there's a place here in the middle that says, wait a second, let's look back at how God designed emotions. He designed emotions as signals. I like to say they're kind of like the signals on your car dashboard. There's just little lights coming on. There's nothing wrong with those lights, but those lights are trying to communicate something to you about your car. Your engine is overheated, your oil is low, your tire pressure needs to be fixed. And if you don't know how to read those little lights on your dashboard, your car is going to have a lot of problems. But if you know what those lights are saying, you'll know what to do. Same is true for us. 
When we feel angry, that's just our heart's way of saying there's a problem. But when we try to fix the problem with anger, we totally mess things up. When we're feeling anxious, that's our heart's way of saying something bad might happen to you or something bad might happen to someone or something you love. Okay, well, if I just retreat now, uh, I'm not really going to take on the bad thing that might happen. But if I pause, process, and figure out what I can do to move forward, well, now uh, I can I can expand my capacity because that's the real big thing we have to do. When children have these big emotions, it's not stop feeling that. It's learn how to read that emotion and let's work on training exercises with you. Real life things that we're going to go do to build your capacity. I've got kids who'll say, you know, to their parents after their parents are working with me for a while, like, hey, I, I'm not anxious anymore. I, I don't get angry anymore. They do. <laughs> but what they're expressing is their heart has grown and they have a greater capacity to handle more stressful environments, bigger emotions than they did earlier. It's not a quick fix. We can't do it all in eight weeks. This is a lifelong journey. But when we can understand how emotions are originally designed and how we can use those. And the fact that if I have big emotions, that's actually a good thing because that means I have passions, I have desires, I have empathy. And gosh, I, I really would like it if this world was filled with more people who had passions, desires, and empathy that use them for good things. So yeah. that's what I do with, with parents. And then they go work with their kids. And we, we do a whole lot of different routines and exercises to help them. And then we tailor it all because there's no cookie cutter kid. So we can't have a cookie cutter approach. So we have these different heart tools, but then how we use those tools with kids uh, is going to adapt based on the kid. Yeah. So good. I love that. It's not focused on just the kid's behavior because I'm that parent that's like, oh my goodness, how do I control my child in the grocery store or at church? <laughs> yes, and so yeah. the fact that it's not focused on their behavior, but it's focused on their heart, the relationship with your child. And I love this quote, it's feelings are messengers. So the fact that you can use that in parenting that, yeah. oh, they're yeah. angry. That must be like what... I like looking at it as it's not bad. You need to be happy all the time, but Hey, you're really angry right now. I can see that. And walking them through emotions. I think that I didn't learn that until I was an adult and maybe my parents were doing it, but I didn't really understand emotions. I didn't really understand how they were healthy. It's healthy to have anger. It's healthy to have joy. It's just healthy to experience all of them and yeah. understanding how to build the relationship. I love that it has heart centered tools for parents when and when you do like coaching with your parents and they come to you would you say there's like a most common emotion they're faced with or situation or problem that a lot of families have that you have some advice or tips for yeah well a lot of i mean they come with all kinds of things and and every child's so different and and there's also a whole nother world of, you know, we have children who are neurodiverse, children who have some special needs, children who have some other uh, biological challenges. And, and guess what? They show up too, and, and they need support too. And the great thing is, is that every kid has a heart that God wants to talk to. So this can work for every single child. It's going to look different for some kids, mm -hmm. but it can work with them too. And so what I find though, is that a lot of people show up with these big emotions. Anger is a big one. Uh, there, there's three big ones, really. Anger, uh, feeling angry, feeling anxious, and feeling sad. You know, those are those are the three big emotions that children and and quite frankly, some adults show up with, uh, and that they struggle with. But the the best part is the answer to all those is is love, peace, and joy. It's the opposite of mm -hmm. feeling angry, feeling anxious, and feeling sad. So part of it is helping us develop a map mentality in our parenting. And I think that's a big go-to strategy any parent can use, whether it's emotions or your kid can't tie their shoes or they're running through the house when you've got the the, the knickknacks out and things like that, whatever it is. We spend a lot of time in parenting saying, stop that, don't touch that, don't do that, don't lick that, whatever it is, don't. And unfortunately, we don't spend as much time saying, hey, start doing this. Mm. And so I like to talk about a map mentality. Point A is where your kid is right now. They're hitting their sibling to get the toy. They're lying about whether or not they were on the device. They're whatever that is. That's point A. 
let's start talking about point B. What's point B? That's the opposite. Point A is not okay. Point B is where you want to be. And so we need to help kids know what they need to start doing, but then we need to help develop the roadmap to get there. Because it's not enough to just tell a kid, hey, start sharing. You know, like, okay, thanks, mom. How? Like, you know, we need to show them like, hey, here's a peaceful way to ask for that toy. Let's practice it right now. You and me, let's pretend I'm your sister. We're going to practice. Okay, now let's go. And that's when, when we talk about training and exercises, the exercise is go in the playroom right now and, and go do this thing I just showed you. Let's see how it goes. And if I got to pull you out of there and go through the training again, we will. But helping kids see what point B is and, and us casting a vision for point B and helping them see that's where you want to be and here's how you get there that can make all the world of a difference in our parenting because now we're more positively focused. Yeah. So good. I wrote those down because all the times the big emotions are anger, anxious, and sad. And the yeah. answer to them is love, peace, and joy. And I love that it's based off of the Bible. It's yeah. like teachings from the best parenting handbook. <laughs> of course, I'm so glad that you pull from there so that I just have it all in one place. I think that's the beautiful part of having a coach. I'm like, it's all here. It's all yeah. mapped out. Here's the seven tools. And so it's really easy to utilize those and you see a difference in your home yeah. and how you approach parenting versus correcting. And I'm the authority to, I'm building a relationship and I'm working yeah. on a hard level. So, so good. Do you have, before we wrap up, is there any, like, tips for those that are building a coaching business, doing online teaching, or maybe they're in the mainstream classroom. What tips do you have for them? If you're trying to be someone who's making content online, uh, there's a couple of things you want to do. Uh, first of all, you want to find other people because, because no one understands, just like no one understands us teachers <laughs> and no one understands us coaches at times. Uh, no one understands us online content creators and no one really understands us YouTubers. <laughs> so find others. And there are times, there, there are gatherings of others of mine who are fellow Christian content creators. And, and you know, I have a group that I meet with. One's a, one's a blogger, two, um, two, two are creating uh, podcasts. I'm the YouTuber in the group. Uh, and that's important uh, because we can support each other in, in different ways. But I have another group. And uh, you know, one's a one, one's an abacus math teacher, another one's a children's book author. You know, and we're very different, and they're they're all over the United States. Some are outside of the United States in our groups, um, but there are groups of others who have a like mind of creating content to help others. So that's the one thing you want to find others. You want to find mentors, and if you're watching Nancy's channel, you have found a fantastic mentor in in a whole bunch of areas, but you want to find some mentors, not to become them, but to help you become you using the wisdom they have found. And you're not going to get it perfect and it's not going to be all right. And guess what? If they really put the camera down and talk to you, they tell you it's not all right with them either at times too. Like, you know, I'm the best parent there is when I'm on YouTube. <laughs> you know? I'm the best parent there is when I'm coaching, but do I struggle too? Yeah, it's not easy. You know, I had a parent one time I was coaching who was like, oh, it sounds so easy when you put it that way, BJ. I said, well, of course, we're talking about your kid, not mine. You know? <laughs> it's hard when I'm in the game, that's tougher. But when you're outside the game watching, it's so much easier. So don't get intimidated by your mentors. Allow your mentors to influence you in positive ways that allow you to become who you've been designed to be for others. Uh, and, and the other one is stick with it. Mm -hmm. don't doubt stick with it people look at, at at our channels and other people's channels like oh i would love to have x number of people subscribed or that many videos or thumbnails like that well guess what we we had stinky videos like at some point we, we got stuff that we don't want online like of course stick with it there was a point where we had a an, an email list that said five and three of them were emails we owned and one was our spouse and one was our mom. Like, that's who it is. Like, we're writing to ourselves. Like, we all start with zero. And the ones who make it, uh, and I would say Nancy probably feels the same way as I do. I don't feel like I made it. Mm -hmm. But I can look backwards and see some people I can help now. Uh, 
and, and that wasn't the case. At one point, I was at the front of the line, so to speak, and now I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle. But it's the people who stick with it, who have others involved, and, and who find mentors, those are folks who are going to survive uh, because you'll also put away doubt. You know, and, and for me, I'm going to draw strength from my relationship with Jesus. And so I'm going to do what he tells me to do. If he tells me shut down a YouTube channel tomorrow, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, are you sure, Lord? But I'll do it because he has something better for me then. Mm -hmm. But you need to know where you gather your strength from and and to use that to help you move you forward. Oh, good. And that's huge faith for you to say, oh, if I had to shut this down and all this work that I've done, it's like, okay, there's something better. That's what's yeah. happening. And yeah. well, again, when, it's easy to say on YouTube, but <laughs> yeah. if you tell me that, that'll be harder. Yeah. <laughs> Actually doing the actions. I When you refer but to I'll coaching- do it. Yes. Yes. I'll do it. I'll say it. And then actually doing it's a different story. Right. But yeah. when you're talking about coaching, I think about it. Like if like the person that you're coaching is often inside the, the bottle that they can't see the nutrition facts. And as a coach, right. I'm like, I can see it. I can look at a YouTube channel and say, Hey, let's tweak a couple things here. Yeah. And I, all you need to know is 10% more than the person behind you. And it's like, you're helping your previous self. And yep. as you continue to grow and test, I refer to creating content or anything in building a business. I feel like it's such a personal development journey, but it's yeah. building habits. It's just the habit of showing up. And I think the best quality content comes when you're working on yourself. Am I reading the books and doing the learning? And I, am I hiring a mentor? And am I improving myself as a coach and as a content creator? And that's going to carry into what I produce and how I can coach. So yeah. yeah, such good takeaways. BJ, I know you have a webinar coming up. Do you want to mention that and share with those listening? If you guys were like, yes, I need to hear more about <laughs> like helping my kids with their emotions and walking them through that. What is your webinar on? Sure. So it's all about empowering your child to handle big emotions because they're, they're going to have them. And we need to help our children take the lead here and us support them in that. So I'm gonna give you three steps that any parent can apply, no matter what the emotion is. So if your kid's feeling angry, if your kid's feeling anxious, if they're feeling sad or more, you'll be able to use these three steps because we, we need a roadmap to help us move forward. And so if you go to jesushelpmeparent.com forward slash big emotions, that's where you can register for the, the parenting webinar right now. Awesome. I'll put a link below as well. And if you're watching this and BJ's wrapped up his live training, I'll put your website there as well, because yep. I know that you'll be opening up the, the webinar probably again in the future. But if you Absolutely. catch this right when we upload, um, <laughs> you got a lot to learn from BJ. Yeah. So thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for having me here. It's been great. Yes, it was so amazing. And I'll leave your YouTube channel linked below too. So all of BJ's links, I'll put below the video. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks, Nancy. We'll see you.